What is the future of Italy? I mean, they just elected a new government a little bit reminiscent of their past. So will chaos keep fueling their nation's politics and economy? And why did Italy just choose to have its most right-wing government since Mussolini? What even is Italy? It sits right here at the bottom of Europe, kicking Sicily into the Mediterranean Sea. The Italian peninsula is bounded by the massive Massif Alps to the north, and then this sea to the everywhere else. Well, I guess you can split it up into the Adriatic Sea to the east and the Tyrrhenian Sea to the west, which has acted as a great defense system and amazing ports for the trade-loving Italians to go out and venture from. But the boot doesn't look like this. It's more one of those spiky boots, you know, the ones either crazy supermodels or edgy e-girls wear. Yeah, that's Italy, with the Apennine mountain range splitting the country down the center. This leaves Italy as a country with tiny pockets of different groups, and for most of Italian history, this is what the peninsula looked like. By far the best pocket to grow in is in the North Po Valley, with the Po River giving access to the defensible Adriatic. It's where industry and trade and finance sprung up in Italy. You know, you have Milan and Florence and Venice up here, but in the south, it's drier, more laid back, a bit more poor, more run down, more pizza loving, and more corrupted by the mafia. It doesn't help that the north has the only longish rivers and huge plains in the country, so the south had a much harder time industrializing, causing the rift between wine olive oil Italy and beer butter Italy. So, Italy goes through phases. When it's feeling a little sad, its geography acts as its own world with a bunch of different competing cities and regions fighting with each other. But when it's happy, or I guess more angry, one region usually takes the wheel and Italy gets a little bit, uh, militaristic is probably the best word. You know, Rome, Mussolini, that sort of thing. Let me tell you, this regionalism or campanilissimo loyalty to one's town over the country does not make politics in Italy simple or boring. Since the founding of the Italian Republic, the average government has only held office for 13 months, with none making it over 5 years long. If this pace keeps up, the average Italian should see about 75 different governments in their lifetime. Parties are always changing, new coalitions die and are born again, and tangentopoly used to be fairly rampant, which is the Italian fancy schmancy way of saying corruption and debt in the government. You know, with this geography the different regions of Italy fought with corruption too, with no side being powerful enough to take over the nation so they switch governments and switch sides faster than a reunited Yugoslavia would collapse again. Italy is more a history of independent nations, so a unified Italy is a young nation, younger than even Canada is, still pretty much an experiment to see these many regions stuck together. It's just like my guy Massimo Dasleggio said, we have made Italy, but now we have to make Italians. If you live outside Europe, you might think of the Italian economy as a thriving G7 nation full of Lamborghini, Gucci, Versace, and Ferrari. If you live inside Europe, you might think of it as an absolute dead weight on the European system. Both are kinda true. Their economy is, surprise, divided between the North and South. Some quick stats for you. The North earns 15% more than the South. 70% of all unemployed Italians live in the South. In fact, less than half of the Southerners are actually employed. Italian debt is over 150% of the GDP, and the Mafia makes up probably about 10% of all Italian GDP. Mostly in, yup, the South. This isn't dissing Italy. The nation has a pretty huge economy, especially in manufacturing. The thing is, it's not the usual massive industrial plant shipping across the world type manufacturing you're used to. Since Italy is a disconnected, long, bumpy, and regionalist country, there is no one Italian supply chain. There are many different, very small supply chains found in smaller areas of the nation, with small to medium sized firms making up over half of all economic profit in Italy making more handcrafted goods. What some might call useless, some others might call it luxury. So in terms of industry and agriculture, Italy's handcrafted supply chains make it pretty safe from the rest of the world's chaos, as long as they can keep a steady supply of their needed materials. 
which made them one of the first nations to support European economic integration. It's just better for their small Italian firms. But it's not all spaghetti and guanciale, my amico. Remember that part about... You might think of it as an absolute deadweight on the European system. Yes, that is still true too. I don't know, man. There must be something in the water of the Mediterranean that makes the governments around it hate paying off their debt. If I lived here, I wouldn't care about paying my debt off either. Whether it be from a lax attitude about taxes or repayment, flat-out corruption, a huge underground economy, high government programs especially trying to bail out the South, or from the EU giving free money to the nation to finance it, the Italians are not too great at handling their debt, having the highest in Europe behind Greece. Yikes. When the 2008 crisis hit, Italy fell down and still hasn't really recovered from it. If a European credit bubble were to blow up, it would mean chaos in Italy, although three sectors will likely stay thriving. Agriculture, manufacturing, and tourism. No foreigner really cares about a financial crisis as long as they can still take selfies at the Colosseum. Youth unemployment is over 30%. Italian banks are notorious for giving out what you call bad loans. GDP growth is lackluster, if not negative, and political instability, aka changing governments and fiscal policy pretty much every single year, certainly doesn't help anyone out either. That all spells disaster, and then there's the people. Oh, to be young in Italy, studying and hanging in areas like this, exploring the countryside and millennia-year-old histories, living with your parents because you can't find any work, and deep down knowing there's a looming crash coming to your country. Italy is a dying nation. Now I don't mean that in the racist immigrants are coming in and replacing us sort of way. I mean that in the numbers and data sort of way. Italy is the oldest country in Europe with a median age over 47 years old. Look at this pyramid. That's a scary lump around the 50 to 60 year old range just waiting to retire, relax and drink Bellinis on the Adriatic. But if you're down here, it means complete crisis. There are just no young workers to replace the experienced older generation, especially when you're a nation focused on luxury, often needing to study the craft for decades in order to meet the demand of guys like this. By next decade, there will be a mass retirement in Italy that won't just crash the luxury market, but the pension overhang will be insane, with over twice as many retirees to workers. It means recession at a minimum, financially ruining a country already pretty financially sketchy. This happened because of Italy's tight, crowded cities, perfect for making a baby boom after a world war if you know what I mean but not perfect for the baby boomers to keep making babies, especially after focusing on their post-war economic miracle instead of families. So in response, many young workers say screw it and leave the country, or leave from the south to the north. Not the most uncommon thing in its history. Italians love leaving their country. Why do you think there are so many Americans role-playing Italians on TikTok these days? This, along with the older generation going off, means that Italy will almost definitely half in population by the end of the century. That's very scary for them. A dying nation could mean deindustrializing, returning to the farms, the debt blowing up, or racism. What? Because you know who are coming in? Refugees. The migrant crisis from 2015 has given Italy over a million low-skilled refugees in the country, many turning to very low-skilled jobs or less legal jobs to make a living because manufacturing is too high-end in Italy for them to go and work at the Vespa factory. As an already crowded and urbanized nation whose citizens are already competing with the other cities economically, a new addition of a million outsiders isn't going to go over very well. It has kind of been a unifying force for the nation against immigrants and against the outside world in general. A perfect addition for Giorgia Maloney to swoop in charge of Italy in a populist movement, which might be a potential future of Italy. But first, we just have to see one more thing. Remember when I said Italy will be safe from the world's chaos if they can keep a steady inflow of materials? Well, can they? The main things they need are minerals, energy, and a bit of food, which they are a net importer of all three, although they could likely grow enough food if tweaked a little bit. Look at this beautiful field. If they can grow enough wine for these guys to be comfortable, they can grow enough bread too. 
Well, I say Italy, but I basically just mean North Italy. North Italy needs all of these things. The thing is, Italian history since the Middle Ages has basically been the North city-states venturing into the Mediterranean to get whatever they needed at that time. They're used to it by now, and with a fairly capable navy and easy juking potential in these seas, Italy will likely stay as a regional power. They can access energy from North Africa and the East fairly easily, they can get minerals from the middleman Turkey and Europe without a problem, and food, eh, maybe they'll have to grow a bit more of it, that or buddy up with France. They can do all of this with no Barbary pirates trying to gun them down too. Their navy is a big body. I mean, if they did fail to secure these inputs, it wouldn't just mean crisis in Italy, it would mean collapse. So that navy better be good. They've gotta get their stuff though. They need to manufacture and over a fifth of the nation is at risk of food poverty. Or at least they gotta do it until their demographic bubble bursts. But who knows, with regionalism and populism popular nowadays, Italy might not act, as one might say, rationally. We could see many different foreign policies or one strong foreign policy take charge. And let's be honest, that strong foreign policy wouldn't be too open to uh, trading or brown people. Which leads us to the future. I don't think Italy is going to shatter apart like they've done in the past. The North needs the South to use as a launching pad to secure the inputs and as a port to ship their goods off. It needs the South to survive. And the South needs the North to give it free stuff for it to survive. They need each other, so in looking at either the multiple foreign policy route or the strong foreign policy route, I think it's much more likely that the strong foreign policy wins. It's a scary thought, but as the young Italians look at a dying country which can't even help its population out from its political instability and regionalism, and when, not if, the economy implodes on itself, they could look at this graph and see how long the black part stayed in charge and want some of that stability. To the North, who doesn't need the South as really anything but a middleman, wanting to keep them in line as such, and to the South whose regions have been ruined by being left behind from the global industrial North, it makes both sides agree on one thing, fascism and or protectionism, although let's be honest, for two pretty different reasons. Italy is a young nation trying to find what rules best for its disconnected system, but it's also a dying nation scrambling to keep its place in the world. Italy is likely going to have a little flirting beyond the right wing for a decade or two as it goes through these collapses. But hey, if you really hate this regime, wait about a year and see if it still even exists. Italy isn't exactly known for their long-lasting governments.